Ah, oh, hello everyone. Welcome back to our new series. And let's get straight over to Jerusalem for the next adventures event in its long and checkered history. Fifty days after the resurrection of Jesus, Jews from the lands all around the eastern Mediterranean were gathering in great excitement to celebrate their ancient festival of weeks in Jerusalem. It would have been a truly joyous occasion, just as the Jewish Bar Mitzvah celebrations are in the Holy City today. The vast throng had gathered from an enormous area around the Mediterranean a truly multicultural crowd. And this was the opportunity, chosen by God, to pour out his spirit on his first disciples, giving them the power to announce the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And this in the very city which had crucified him only 50 days earlier. Peter's astounding message to the enormous crowd was, you killed him, God raised him, we are witnesses. And about 3,000 were deeply convicted and believed his message. They will be returning to their various lands as the very first believers in Jesus, as the Jewish Messiah and as the Son of God. Some of them would be making their way home to the extraordinary land of Cappadocia. Driving through Cappadocia is like travelling back in time. This is the land of the Hittites. They established their empire here about 1600 BC. The astounding fairy chimneys are one of the world's most stunning sights. This landscape was created about uh, 13 million years ago when erupting volcanoes blanketed the region with ash. The ash solidified into an easily eroded material called tufa, overlaid in places by layers of hard volcanic rock. Over time, the tufa was worn away, creating these distinctive formations, including the capped cone fairy chimneys. So it was to this remarkable land that some of its residents returned from Jerusalem as some of the earliest believers in Jesus as the Jewish Messiah and the Son of God. But back at Jerusalem, not everyone shared their faith. One of the believer's fiercest opponents was Saul, later known by his Roman name of Paul. He was a strictly religious Jew, brought up to observe the requirements of the law in the most intimate detail. Today, at Jerusalem's famous Western Wall, the intensity of Jewish prayers and rituals provides a dramatic insight into the intensity of Paul himself. He knew that this Jesus had been crucified for claiming to be the Messiah and now his followers were claiming that God had raised him from the dead in dramatic confirmation that he was indeed the Messiah. To Paul, such a fervent Jew, it was intolerable. How could this Jesus be the long-awaited Messiah? His tomb was certainly empty. Everyone in Jerusalem knew that. The stone had been rolled away and the body gone. But it was all a massive deception by his disciples, surely. They had doubtless stolen his body and were now claiming he was alive. What's more, many thousands were believing them. This deceit would be spreading ever further. It must be halted at all costs. One of Jesus' followers had already been stoned to death. Stephen, the very first Christian martyr. As the rocks rained down on him, Stephen prayed, Lord, don't hold this sin against them. And Saul was present to see him die. He, for one, could never forget it. Stephen's death triggered a great persecution. Several of the believers had to flee for their lives, many as far as Damascus. So Saul set off in hot pursuit, determined to destroy this new movement. So out of the city and across the Kidron Valley, past the Garden of Gethsemane. Oh my word, this was where Jesus had been arrested. The whole city knew all about that. And then on up to the top of the Mount of Olives. Time for a last long lingering look at Jerusalem behind him. 
The road now tumbled down through the awesome Judean wilderness to the bottom of the Great Rift Valley, the lowest place on earth, nearly 1,400 feet or 423 meters below sea level. The temperature soars and so did Saul's anger. They thought they could escape him, did they? Little did they know that he was after them. But then, could it be that someone might be after him? So, it's not looking good for those early believers in Jesus. Just think what they were going through. The murder of one of their most respected leaders, and now a great persecution, which meant that they were having to flee for their lives away from Jerusalem. And now, news that they were still not safe. Saul, the leader of all this opposition, would be after them too, even in far off Damascus. So, join me next time as we continue following Saul on his murderous mission. The further he went, the greater his fury seemed to burn, as we shall see. I do hope you can join me. I'll see you then.